Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo and today we're going to work on my 64 Dodge 440. Last time the story was we got it up, running and ripping down the road, but the minute we took it back it basically fell apart. Uh, the pump bearings, you know, in the transmission are howling and making a racket. It spit out every type of fluid once we parked it, like the floor is covered in ATF, there's oil leaking out and it's just not ready for the kind of miles we want to put on this thing. Because the plan is this, take it from our shop in Pennsylvania and drive it under its own power all the way to Bowling Green, Kentucky. So we've got some work to do. Let's get started. Please take a second and go over to the Stay Tuned merch store. We've got a rack of shirts from the original Stay Tuned shirt, Angelo's Gym. We're going to lose the shop and there's lots of stickers too. All right. Once in a very long while, you will find exactly what you need looking online. And that's what happened here. Uh, this is a 64 Dodge with a push button transmission. So only I think a 63 and a 64, the exact same transmission. Uh, we were in Bristol, Tennessee for the Bristol 1000 race. And I started searching around. We talked about going four speed, what that would take. Obviously pedals, a clutch, bell housing, transmission, figure out a drive shaft amount if we don't run an A33 Mopar style. It's a lot. And I was like, I just want to get this thing into the same cruiser mode it was. I think push button transmissions are cool. It's like just a fun, super weird old school thing. This is the last year before the federal government mandated you have to have an actual shifter. So it's a pretty cool piece. And I just start searching around on Facebook Marketplace and I found, believe it or not, this perfect piece. This is a 64 push button Dodge 727. The front has been modified to accept the later style converter. It's got a shift kit, it's been fully rebuilt, and uh, it's ready to rock. This was the other big thing I was concerned about with putting miles on this car. The push button transmissions don't have a slip yoke. This is way back in the day. We're talking mid 60s here. They have this weird joint, and obviously the boot's ripped. It's got some play in it already, and I was just worried about this thing eating itself alive. And what was great, for 900 bucks, I got this transmission and a modern style drive shaft that has a bolt up yoke here, it runs a proper modern universal joint, a slip, and a universal joint at the back. So that's something I think could be sort of like a permanent solution for this car. 900 bucks for everything is an absolute steal. I was very pumped. This is a 26 to 2800 RPM stall converter, depending on which version the guy was telling me when I got there. Um, but either one is going to work way better than stock. I'm very excited. Maybe this thing will actually spin some tires now because it'll just whip up into the power band. And that's it. Step one, throw this in, and we're going to get into some other modifications that are going to help us get down the road. Cool. So there is a parking pawl that's actuated by a single lever cable, which is pretty cool. Uh, we're going to take that out. I changed over the lever for the throttle. Uh, it's like a TV cable now instead of being this big mechanical lever. I'm going to take that off. Obviously, the bolts, get the mount, probably drop this exhaust down and uh, get ready to rock from there. Start taking this transmission out. Where are we gonna start? If you look into the pan, you see all this, all this there. The technical term for that is burnt toast. I'm glad we're doing this. It wouldn't last forever. Instead of having the parking pole just be part of the regular shifter, like a modern transmission, it has a very separate park mechanism that lives under this gasket. This is the clamp for the cable. Inside, there's just a park lever, totally independent of the shifter. So if you're doing whatever with the shifter, and it's still in park, it's still in park. The way it says from some ancient documents that I found, loosen this cable clamp, shove a screwdriver up in there and it'll just sort of pop off. So I'm excited. Then we're gonna talk about the shifter, which is way wilder. So hopefully we get that figured out too. But I don't want it to keep us from getting the transmission out. Hopefully we didn't mangle that thing too bad. We might have. We'll see. 
I'm trying to get it to hold that thing. And that's what holds your, that's what holds the whole car from moving around. It just locks that thing. It finds a pawl like a regular transmission and it lets it out. Yeah, we may be doing a little bending on this thing, but we'll make it happen. Push that to the side and deal with that later. That goes up there now. All right, I managed to disconnect the shifter cable without breaking anything, even though it looks like it's had some welding done on it. I don't know what's going on there. This is like a TV cable I got from Summit to replace the linkage we didn't have. That seemed to work just fine. The last thing is speedo cable, torque converter bolt, and the engine bolts, you know, transmission engine bolts. Drop this mount, the whole thing will come right out. Wow, that feels really good. That thing loves life. Starter bolt there. It's easy. Bolt down there. So it is time to take out our transmission. Torque converter is disconnected. This is the last mount bolt. Uh, coming between the engine and the transmission. The mount in the back is just sitting on top. And we're ready to rock here. Get this big hunk of I got a hunk of aluminum out of here. Watch yourself. One last bolt. So now I know why people were coming up to get a trans jack. I know, that would have been cool. miserable. <laughs> I was just having so much fun. Oh yeah, you didn't take that out of Huh. It started to come out so easily compared to the other ones. Is that good? Grab a dolly or something. We don't have any dolly. Can you buy a bunch? Yeah, they're all occupied. Oh, cool. We got other transmissions on. All right, we just go on the floor. Is that your plan? You got the heavy one. You got that? Switch. Okay. It's not too big. It's heavy, boy. All right. Ah! Still better than that floor, baby. All right. Cool. So there it is. One freshly extracted push button 1964 727 transmission. Uh, while we are waiting on the updated flex plate to work with the newer style torque converter, Zach's going to do a couple things that we've been meaning to do, uh, change the fuel filter, change the oil filter, and hopefully clean up the absolute hack job I did on those rear fenders trying to get the tires to fit. And we'll get back in it. they hold you got tan what you got here we got some sound bender from our boys at summit I throw this in here because Tony's gonna be driving this thing who knows where so maybe he can do it in peace instead of just doing it feel the back it's just like stickers and stickers are my favorite so I should be pretty good with this. you just kind of shove it in there get it started and then you spend 26 hours with this little roller, and you roll it in. I already broke the roller. No! It's been four seconds. We're gonna lose the job. Oh no. I fixed it, don't worry. I'm a mechanic. Yeah, look at that. I can hear a difference already. Oh, 
here is to install a carpet kit that we got from Summit, uh, an ACC brand. Um, one little trick that I've learned over the years of doing a bunch of different carpet sets in different cars, I love using carpet tape to sort of place stuff and keep it tight against the tunnel, against the floor pans, against the rockers. Not a ton, just like little squares here and there. Um, this stuff is crazy, crazy sticky. You can get it pretty much anywhere. So before we even bring the carpet kit in here, I'm gonna cut a couple pieces, just little squares and put them on top of the tunnel here. And then when we put the carpet in, we'll center it up, fold it over to one side, peel back the tape and then stick it down. And then from there we can work one side then the other side and then start trimming out for some of the seat brackets uh, for the back seats and for the front seats. <laughs> okay. All right, so I got all the squares of carpet tape all on the top of the tunnel, both sides of the tunnel. So we're gonna lay this in. This is the back piece. And left to right, just try and get it as close as we can. So there's a bunch of extra overlap on this side. Kind of like lay it in and see, okay, the sill plate's gonna cover it here. You get it tucked in over here. Sill plate's gonna cover it in over here. So we'll get this laid out, centered up, and then pull this back, pull some of the tape back, stick it down and be good to go. Okay, all right, so we've got this carpet finally installed all the way. We've got the back seat back in here. We trimmed out the carpet to go around the seat mounts. Um, there's a couple holes in the floor and on the rockers for the seat belts. Uh, on this side, there's a pan that somebody made a little patch and covered the seat belt hole. So we're gonna have to drill a hole in here for the seat belt, but we did uncover the one on the tunnel side on either side and the one on the rocker. Um, everything's trimmed out for the gas pedal and for the high beams, and it's all stuck down with carpet tape. This is looking a thousand times better. Uh, a little bit of wiring under the dash, and then we'll throw the seat in and get this thing on the roof. Barb and Zach have got the interior looking awesome. The new carpet is in, seat belts are in, and before they toss the seat in, or we all toss the seat in, I'm gonna go through and fix the wiring. And I, With the seat out, if you ever gotta do a bunch of wiring and you take the seat out, which takes about five minutes, you can actually lay under there and fit, and it's a little bit easier. Uh, Mopars came with this thing called an ammeter. It's not a voltmeter. It reads amperage. It's a terrible idea. It's one of the things that Mopar did very wrong. It's a fire hazard. It's a mess. Basically, they have an in, like every single piece of voltage, amperage, electrical energy goes through this one gauge and then is sent out to the rest of the car and the alternator. So the whole thing is like one big hot spot for the wiring and what happens every time is what happened to our car is that it starts to melt and starts to burn it's a little bit the wires are too small you can see these are the two wires these terrible looking ones went to that ammeter and probably in a couple thousand miles would have started to be a real problem and maybe started to fire you can see this is melted here in the connector um, what i did already this goes in and out of the alternator from the this junction here I just have them looped and jumped so that my alternator will charge the car. What I'm gonna do now is feed the fuse box, the ignition switch, and a couple other things just directly through here and eliminate, delete that ammeter, um, just so we can keep on rocking and make sure there's no problems. And finally, turn a key and start this thing, which would be awesome. I don't really like any of these wires. They look terrible. And this goes to the alternator and we need to get that right to the battery. So that's what we're gonna do first and then I'm going to get underneath the dash and manually feed fuse box, light switch, ignition switch, and this thing will be a little bit safer. I wouldn't say safe because 
we'll look at it. You can see the coating on the actual wire is gone. This is just somebody electrical taped it back as far as the eye can see. So we're going to do a new one. It's going to go right to the main post of the alternator. It's going to feed the battery through this main ignition relay. That's how the car is going to charge. So it's pretty important. And it charges it through the starter wire, which again also looks pretty terrible. Um, connected here, alternator feeds this, jumps back down to the starter, starter wire goes to the battery. But it's not going to do anything because I just broke it in half. Also not great. All right, we got some wiring to do here. Let's buckle up. We're going to have to get out that old wire care cart. See what we can do here. You know what you never, never want to see when you're doing wiring? The color green. That's a bad, that's a bad start. You know, it's cool on the Statue of Liberty when copper turns green, but here, not the best. Just going to ride with that. All right, let's get underneath the dash and make a mess. Here we go. Cool. Okay, so digging around in the car, seeing some stuff I don't love. Well, getting garbage in my eyes. So that is where the cowl should be. Uh, it's kind of being held up by the wiper arm at this point. There's a 0% chance that when it rains, it's not just going to pour all over the shifter mechanism and all over my feet and all over these wires. It looks like somebody already came in here with a bunch of home spackling or fiberglass, uh, maybe asbestos, I don't know, something terrible. Did a job, it looks like it lasted about 17, 18 hours, and the rest of it continued to just rot away. So this car, boy, is just not, I don't know, it, it's not going to be watertight by any means, but we're going to hit the road anyway. Why not? I'm just gonna leave this thing intact and just cut. This is the wire that's feeding everything, this black one. So I'm gonna cut that. There. I'll pull that down and splice right to it. And I'm just gonna cut this red one just to get it out of everyone's light. Okay. Cool. So this is the ammeter. All of the car's electrical power goes through that gauge with wires that are too small. It eventually starts a fire. It's a bad idea. So we're going to just delete it, but that's what we're going to look for because on the back of it um, was the red wire coming from the starter relay. And then we go back out to the alternator and we read all of the charge that was being pulled, all of the energy needed, essentially here, discharge and charge for the fuse box, the light switch, the ignition, the headlights, all that stuff, it would read that. And it's a cool idea, but it just doesn't work out because again, it, everything, everything goes through that one circuit and it's just not beefy enough. So uh, I'm gonna try to get to the back of it. This is a picture of it already being deleted. Both of these black and red things used to come through this main connector here. So I'm gonna see if I can get behind it without taking out the dash. Maybe quicker to do that, but I'll let you know in about two seconds. And uh, we're just going to bring in a brand new wire and get to this welded splice, connect to it and feed ourselves to the fuse box, to the light switch and to the ignition switch. Here we go. Let me check it out. I'm going down and again, best case scenario, I'm sitting on brand new carpet and there's no seat in the car, so I'm not killing myself. Take it until I tell you to stop. Pull some more. That's good. Stop there. Okay, all the wiring under the dash is done. Barb and Zimmy are going to throw the seat in and keep on rocking on the interior. And I'm going to get under here and just remake the whole uh, charging and starting harness. And we'll be good to go. So the fun continues, uh, tracing back this starter wire that's delivering all of the power uh, to the entire car is melted all the way down, so I'm going to have to replace it. Just a little bit more of a pain in the butt, but 
as I touched it, I was like, it feels flat and weird, and it's flat and burnt. You can see it's not in good shape. Not supposed to see the wire through the insulator. All bad news. enough for you today. <laughs> All right, the interior is looking sick compared to where we started. I'm happy with that. I can live in there for a while for sure. Got these musical doors. I'm into it though. Spread a little grease and listen. No radio, we'll just listen to that the whole time. We found two different dash bezels. One is if you're running a rock radio, one is if you're not. This is some kind of, you know, delete panel, which is pretty cool. We're gonna toss that in, clean it up. I think it just glues in. Couple. Is there any, it is a mirror on that side. That's cool. Yeah, you're good. You got a rear mirror one. You're legal. <laughs> Boom. The reason we are on deep thrash mode with the Dodge 440 is that I want to take it. My buddy Mikey is coming. He's an old buddy from forever ago. We used to drift together, and then I've been doing hot rods forever. Uh, we are going to take this thing from our shop outside of Philadelphia, drive it all the way to central Ohio, where his family's from. He's got his 1972 Dodge Challenger sitting there in a barn waiting to be awoken. And then we're going to take them both and cruise all the way to Bowling Green, Kentucky, hopefully under their own power, and make it to Holly's Mill Party. I'm super pumped. We've got a lot more work to do. It's time to put this transmission, no, wait, this transmission up and in the car. We're gonna cram in that upgraded, rebuilt uh, 1964 push button 727 transmission with that modernized drive shaft. It's got the better torque converter, so it's got a higher stall. It's supposed to have a shift kit, it'll shift harder, and it's been rebuilt. All those things I was told by a very respectable man down in Virginia on our way home from uh, the Bristol 1000. So I believe them, it was a good price, and I'm gonna throw it all in. All right, I'm gonna run PRW SFI rated flex plate. Again, our transmission that we're putting in, uh, apparently the front end was machined to accept a more modern style torque converter. Uh, and this modern style torque converter has a different bolt up, so I had to get this piece, but it's definitely stronger and better than what was in there anyway. After our maiden voyage, I heard this thing make our old transmission making a racket, and my brain immediately went to like, okay, it's gonna be a four speed car immediately, like, let's rock. It'll be like all the old super stock cars, it'll be awesome, and start looking at like A833s, or can I put a crash box in it? Just like getting wild right off the bat. And then my brain remembered that like, we could do that down the road, and I think push buttons are cool, and let me just get something back in this car. And I started searching, found the perfect set up in this. It's got the torque converter, it's been rebuilt, it's got the shift kit, it's got a sweet drive shaft, and I was, that'll do. That'll do for now and I'll be happy. And here's the thing, you don't have to go nuts just instantly on your car. Get it on the road, drive it, love it, make it better, make it better. Take big leaps when you want, but just get it on, on the road. That's the plan with this thing. You kind of have to like get it sideways. And then up. Zach tossed in some AN style fitting so we can run an AN cooler. That's Army Navy to you guys. It just means the fancy red and blue fittings. And make you think it's a race car. Just about there.
That's how it goes. All right, maybe we can free this thing up. I think now this outer mechanism is free of the cable. Looks, look, looks to be. So how I'm going to do that in here is beyond me, but I guess you push that thing way up and if it's loose, it'll come out. So I'm going to get some vice grips on here and try to turn this thing. It's like a hex actually. You know, it's park. We could live without park, right? It's not my favorite gear. Got the access plug out. Now that I know what I'm doing, I think I just push this lever up. It's like a spring that comes all the way through that both shafts and disconnects them. Now I can probably do that. Or at least get the housing out of the way and put some outside pressure on it while I. Ha <laughs> There it is. Bingo. It's a little fishing lure. Sick. I got cat. Okay, cool, that's done. Very confidence inspiring. Transmission fluid. And I think I just can slide it into place and hopefully it'll just lock in. Ooh, that sounded pretty good. That sounded pretty good. Yep, there it is. Okay, so I think now we will put it back in the park, which will shorten the cable, and I'll tighten it all down on the clamp, and we'll be ready to rock. And that's awesome. It's got some kind of slip pin. Oh, yeah, it's tight now. It had to lock in. Okay, good. Park Lever has been defeated. Sick. Uh, Mikey has arrived. This is my buddy Mikey. He's been with me for, we've been buddies for 20 years yeah. now. Drift racing, on HRG a bunch of times. Just having fun. We lived together for, in LA, we lived together in New York. Yeah. We've done some things. Anyway, he picked up this Ram Charger. Uh, he's a new dad. And he thought, like any good new dad, while he was in labor and delivery, he bought a absolute project, sweet Ram Charger. Sight unseen. Sight unseen. One of our buddies like, he's like, I gotta have this thing. Anyway, congrats on the baby. Yeah. Congrats, the baby's awesome. Congrats on the Ram Charger. This is it, this is the maiden voyage. It was, yeah, I've been sitting for a long time. 20 years, according to the inspection system. Yeah, everything was seized. Yeah. What have you done so far? Shit, uh, front hubs, brakes all around, brake lines all around, fuel yeah. lines, fuel pickup, radiator. Rebuilt the car, just tidying things up. Uh, you know, plugged up the ECR, forks that were rotted out. You know, a little bit of everything. Exhaust. Yeah, it is sweet. Maybe. We're not taking this thing to Mo Party, unless you want to. We could. The plan is to drive the 440 Polara, whatever you want to call it, to Mikey's family farm in Central Ohio, yeah. pick up his Challenger, and then keep on rocking with these two muscle cars all the way out to Kentucky. But well, we could take this well, We could take this also. We should get Zach to drive it. Uh, that's fine, I'm down. Then it'll be one more sketchy, hilarious, awesome Mopar to take out. That's right. If not, he'll drive our, my 04 Ram Cummins thing you can't really hurt or stop. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, park cable's done. We're gonna move on to the 15 other things this thing needs. This is a TV cable, basically, I don't remember the exact name for it, but when you hit the gas, the transmission needs to know to increase line pressure, and this cable does just that. It goes right up to the carburetor, and it, it basically has like, uses the carburetor as a bell crank to pull this thing. Uh, it's just an aftermarket kit from Summit. It works really well. Pretty 
straight shot. And that will maybe come. All right, this guy, the speedometer cable kind of deleted. I'm going to try to just pull this out of here. The speedometer in this car actually works, so I'm going to try to use it. Good. Yeah. Good. One fun thing to look at on the dash. What is this piece? It should just be a collar. There she goes. Speed out cable. Who knows if it's going to read right, but at least it'll do something. Boom. All I need to do is get to the main terminal. How hard is that to do? The battery terminal. It's very not easy. So is it easier now with it loosey goosey? Yeah. All right, we'll take take that battery, take that main that main wire off, and we'll we'll just do it. I'll just throw it up. You know, we'll make it make this one end, and then we can bolt it in. A Mikey is buttoning up the starter install. I am going to pull off what's left of a stock pinion snubber on a Dodge. You don't just throw slapper bars on it when you want it to launch. The way they work, because of the way the leaf springs are, is that you get a big old adjustable pinion snubber on here. From the factory, the performance cars have a, a little bit of like a beefed up snubber here. It slams up into the floor pan just to keep that axle wrap to a minimum. And I actually have, from when I was a kid, this piece. This is an adjustable. We got a good line on that here. This is from my first car at 1971, 340 Demon. I took it off and I put in the six link setup from QA1. But this is, I believe it came, I think I have a box from Sox and Martin. So they were like big time drag racers, Ronnie Sox and Buddy Martin. And they invented this thing, which is basically just a sign post. There are two different size square tubes. And you can adjust it up and down for preload, make sure the thing launches right. It's a pretty trick little setup and it should work out awesome on this thing. Plus, it's cooler on a car than it is sitting on a shelf. Only thing I have to check and see if those front holes are, in fact, non-existent. They're non-existent. So when this was out, I would have liked to probably drill and tap them. But I'm just going to bolt it in the back ones and let it ride. Where's it going to go? Is it going to fly up? All that force is going the other way. Mikey is installing the drive shaft that came as part of this package. It's one of the reasons I really wanted to get my hands on all of this stuff. Normally, there is a flange here and kind of a ball and socket slip yoke from the 60s. It's impossible to rebuild. It can wear out. And I just wasn't confident the stuff we had was ever going to last. The boot was already ripped. It was a disaster. But this guy um, had set up a more modernized version of it and had it all fabricated. So this is a modern U-joint with a flange uh, and then a little yoke here. That allows a modern slip joint. So this can move in and out lengthwise as it needs to, uh, which is really cool. It still works with the transmission we have, and it's all ready to rock. The guys at Hartman Drive Shaft shortened it for us about three inches because the car it came out of, which was killer, was a 64 440 Dodge, but it was a full-on gasser with a 413 and a live axle in the front, and they'd move the motor like three inches forward. So I got it, sent it off to Hartman in Reading, PA, and they fixed it up for us. They just Short it up a little bit. Mikey's wrapping up this install. I'm making transmission cooler lines and we'll bolt this thing up into place. Try to figure out that shifter cable and then we're pretty close to hitting the road. All right, so this has pretty intense headers like any good Mopar because they're unibody cars, so the headers go literally everywhere. And that means I need to keep these lines nice and tidy, but also away from that heat. So I've run this heat sleeving we just got from Wirecare. It's half inch and I'm going to put about a foot of it on 
And then I'm going to pull out a couple of oil pan bolts and with some P-clips just kind of hold them right there. Throw them over the cross member and the, the cooler will go right in front of the radiator. It won't be, won't be straight. Just about the last thing we have to do to hook up this transmission is the shifter cable. And to do that on a push button, you actually have to get that pan off and watch how it shifts and moves through the entire range with your eyeballs and a mirror. It's pretty involved, but I really want to go with this push button vibe. So that's what we've got to do. Dug into that thing. Sloppy. Was there one in this? Yeah, take that one. Yeah, it goes. There she is. That was it. A little detective work. So this transmission that I bought had the modern style, um, let's see, there were reverse lights and neutral interlock, I think. You know, one switch. And the old styles must be different even mechanically because it wasn't allowing this thing to shift at all. But we had to get in here anyway and we figured it out. And that's great. Oh, just pressure release? Yeah, this is, what, this is exactly how the park thing worked. Just left it in now. We can't because ours is welded together. See? Oh, so it doesn't do that. Ours doesn't do it's that like cool thing. Too hard. Well, this is only to replace the cable, I think. But it's you could leave this arm on the transmission, release it the spring, and it would be like that. That's the cable. But ours is welded in one piece. Okay. Whatever. Clip. It's what we've got. We don't need the clip. Same. That's why it was welded. Yeah. So we didn't get the clip. Oh, probably. And they broke it, or who knows what. It's like got a pin in here. It took some real nose to get it out. It's a real disaster. Let's run it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stick it in and forget about it. Yeah. A little bit more. And you gotta rotate it. Oh. I got it. You got it? Yeah. Look at that. How about that? Oh wow, look at that. That's the view. That's so cool. All right, so the way that this works, so you, this is the adjuster, right? As you spin it and you just, it'll push yeah. it in or take it out, you spin it the other love way. It, love it. And it's just got a wheel on it and one, so, so it's 10 degrees. It's infinitely inc adjustable, inc yeah. Well, in yeah. degree increments. Yeah, 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 it's definitely enough. I'm sure it's fine enough it to be in, this is the ballpark. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I like that. So why don't you hop up in the car and start working it through the things and I'll watch the rooster selector rooster, thing. Rooster selector thing. Do you have a detent ball? Do you want it to be in the middle of of each detent on the different shifts? What what are you in now? Nothing. Start pushing buttons. Keep going. Is all the way down? Are you in one? Give me one, give me more. I'll go first. Is that first? First. 
Okay, I can see where we gotta go to. Okay, give me two. That's two? Yep. Oof. Okay, so we're looking at... That's reverse. So it's one, two, drive, neutral, reverses over there. Wow, we're not even in the ballpark. I mean, it's just gotta be... All right, I'm, let me take this thing out and start spinning it. We'll get there. I right, push it in neutral. Okay. That's yep. That's yeah. I didn't want to break it. Yep. What are you in now, Mikey? Reverse. Actually, I'm going to reverse right there. All right, try it now. Give me uh, neutral. Ooh, nice. Okay, three. Two. One, I like a little, give you a little bit more like that. So I think just out there. Well, it doesn't take much to really make a big difference. Holy moly. All right, run me through some gears. Reverse. Jeez, wow, that's a big one. Go ahead. Yeah, big deal. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh huh. Yep. Reverse. Second. Neutral. Go to three. All right, buddy. I'm buttoning you up. Get the road. Get this big old horse hair out of there. Us 727 is in there. It's got the new stock converter. It's rebuilt with a shift kit. Parking cable is working. Parking brake is working. The shifter seems to be working. The new drive shaft is in. All we're going to do now is toss the exhaust back on this thing, slam it on the ground, connect that one starter wire, and fire it up and be ready to rock just about. So I'm pumped. You want to do that now? All right, let's do it. We'll just keep rocking. Okay, exhaust is going on. One last thing, one of the final touches here, police center caps, make that thing look a million times better for these cop 15 by 7 wheels we got, done. Good. All right, all we have left before we hit the road. We're going to bring this thing down, we're going to connect the one starter wire, we're going to set the tow, fill up all the fluids, and then we're ready to rock. I'm very excited, it's been a long and productive day, excuse me, it's been a long and productive day. I'm feeling pretty good. All right, we are just about ready to rock, it's the next morning, I'm going to, we've got fluids in the transmission, in the radiator, we've changed the lower hose out, rewired that starter wire, it's ready to fire up, so we turn key now, 
and then I think we'll just get it, put me on the lift, let this thing droop out, and I'll run it through the gears, and we'll check the transmission fluid. Make sure it, you know, goes into gear and does, does stuff. All right, ready? Let's do it. That's what I said to God this morning. Why don't we just lift this up another three inches? We'll be in business. There she goes. It's like trying to, you hear that? It like kicks at the end. I gotta check the, I don't know that the wire is giving it power during cranking. Yeah. Maybe it's starting when I'm letting off and it's already rolling. Yeah, I don't understand what it's doing. Yeah, hold on. Just checking the feed to the ignition box. Make sure I've got power all the time. You on there? So we've only ever ran this car hot wired. That's why I just ran it, you know, a wire from the battery right to the ignition, and then I just bumped the starter with a screwdriver to get it running, and it was fine. And then we're trying to crank it now through the key, and it doesn't want to run. And sometimes as you're letting the key off, it fires up. We realize anytime you take an old school Mopar that's been on points, it's converted to electronic ignition. It has to have power full 12 volts during cranking and they don't. And the only way to get that really um, using the factory wiring is to jump off of the starter trigger itself, the thing that energizes the solenoid. Uh, that's the only thing that has 12 volts during cranking for the factory wiring. And I'm gonna run it over to the ignition to feed that power to crank it up. The only thing you need to do is put a diode in line because if you don't, diodes allow electricity to flow one way and not backwards. So if you don't do that, when the ignition is back into run mode, it will be feeding power to the starter, back feeding it, and it will try to start up and crank that thing and knock the teeth off your starter and probably your flywheel. So I'm gonna put this little, I'm gonna put this little diode, which is a, it's a little one-way gate for electricity in here, and we should be good to go. I just got to do a little quick, quick solder job. I, would, I happen to have this diode laying around because I like to buy stuff at auctions, and this is just like a case of electrical components, mostly relays and resistors, but found some diodes, and we're going to be ready to rock in a minute. This is the starter trigger wire that gets 12 volts during cranking. This is my wire with the diode that's going to allow electricity to flow one way and I'm just going to jump it into the pickup that's running my ignition box and coil. We should be good to go. Yeah, as long as this doesn't come apart, we'll be fine. Yeah, I was going to say, if we're putting a lot on that maybe one. A little, we'll... Maybe a little electrical tape on there. Yeah, whatever. Solder. Sure. All right, now to start right up, hold on. This thing in park, Zach. In neutral. Okay, fire it up. There we go. That's more like it. All right, let's take it out. Let's throw our stuff in it and hit the road.
our little helper leaf springs did almost nothing. So we're a little bummed about that. The plan is now to take some 225.50s, these little small handling guys, put them on the front, put our 245.60s on the back, and just get down the road and figure it out later. We're gonna take our 275s with us and we can find some helper springs, proper ones, we'll put them in. But I wanna get, we have to get out of here. All right, we're trying to get, we're trying to get moving. The plan is Mikey's place in Ohio, hopefully by tonight. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, we gotta still keep on trucking. We're trying to get to Holly's Mo Party in Kentucky, so we'll see. All right, we have 225s in the front, 245s in the back. Nothing is rubbing, it's leaking every fluid known to man. And we are gonna hit the road. Next stop, Ohio. Ohio. We're out on the road, we've made it, what, 10, 12 miles? Yeah. It feels good. It definitely runs good, it's leaking a ton of oil.